Hey everyone, so I'm going to teach some biology today, yay! <laughs> I've never done this before, but I really want to do better in biology. I just want to understand it more, so, you know, more chance that I'm just smarter at it and someday be able to help people or something. <laughs> okay, so I read a little bit in my book, but not like a whole ton or anything. I still have quite a lot to go. But, um,. We can start here. Um, I was reading about cell communication and the four different types of cell communication, and then uh, signal transduction and all this other very detailed stuff. So, sort of detailed, a little bit detailed. <laughs> okay, so let's begin before I run out of time because I'm very slow at communicating this to you. <laughs> Okay, so, um, there are four different things that a cell can do in its lifetime, and that's either survive, die, um, grow, or differentiate, and differentiate is becoming more specialized. Um, and if a cell doesn't do anything, then eventually it's just going to die, it's either going to program itself to die, or it'll just die, die, <laughs> like from lack of nutrition or, you know, things that it needs. So it has, those are its options, okay? And then, um, but a cell also needs to go through some sort of social life. It needs to communicate with other cells. So, um, and if it doesn't do this, then it won't be able to do any of its choices. So. Um, but it, it just doesn't happen like that. It's just not, oh, here's a signal and boom, that it's going to make that happen. No. <laughs> um, a, okay, one cell will have a signal molecule on it. And, uh, and then the target cell, it's going to have a target cell. And that's going to have a receptor on it, which is specifically for that signal molecule. So, um... So that's how it works, but uh, <laughs> see, the signal molecule needs to needs to travel a little bit, and um, there's four ways by which the signal molecule is sent to the receptor molecule, and uh, it's either short di short distance, long distance, uh, through neurons, or um, contact dependent, which is like face to face between the molecules or between the cells. Um, so I'm just going to explain each of those ways a little bit. Um, the long distance is called the endo, it's called endocrine. Um, and the reason why it's called that is because what's usually sent long distance throughout the body is hormones. And, uh, hormones, they're always released by being, uh, transported into the bloodstream because the bloodstream is all over our bodies and it can go in, in our arms and our legs and our toes and our head. So it's, yeah, so hormones are sent through the bloodstream and then that's how they reach other parts of the bodies. And the, the, um, the cells that produce hormones are called endocrine, or yeah, endocrine cells. So that's where we get the name endocrine and long distance. And um, so that one's pretty easy. And uh, I'll give examples of each type afterwards though. Alright, and um, the short distance is called panocrine. Um, this is just very locally between cells, like all the cells in my hand, they probably communicate with each other, it's very local. and. Um, example of this that they provided was that if you get a cut or whatever, you know, you don't, you're not going to need like a hormone to come and save you from it. Probably not, but it'll just be locally and you know, the, the, your skin will heal, um, the cells will get signals to divide again and, you know, just cover over whatever it was lost. So, just very local. 
and then um then the neuronal um this is be just uh it's long distance again but it's between neurons and it doesn't go into the bloodstream this time it's through the nervous system and um the signal will travel across the axon and um eventually it'll read a synapse where there's a junction and then either it will go into the neuron or something or or it will need to go on the receptor and then wait outside the cell but then the signal transduction will take place and it will the receptor will relate the signal from there on <laughs> okay so there's that one and then there's um there's contact dependent which is like face to face between cells so this is really close and here's the molecules here's one here's the other one or the cells <laughs> so they're like right next to each other and one has the receptor on it it looks like it'll be like that an example and then let's say this is the signal so the signal molecule needs to attach to the receptor and then eventually some sort of response will take place but if you're dealing with the very complex complex cells you know they're going to be getting uh, like so many different signals around them hundreds of thousands and there's just a whole bunch and um and uh <laughs> I forgot what I was saying but there's only going to be a few that the cell actually takes in but if there there could be a cascade signaling which is signal after signal after signal it's sent along the line of the receptors and uh, this needs to take place in order for the final response to happen until it reaches a like enzyme or something which will get the reaction going so yeah and um, there's that one okay so I'm just gonna give examples of some hormones for the long distance uh, endocrine and then the local mediators for the uh, short distance or panocrine and the neurotransmitters oh yeah that's an important word that I learned today um, a neurotransmitter is just a signal molecule that comes from a neuron <laughs> so like I knew that but like I never thought of the definition before so it's good to know that and then um, it's kind of sad though because I only list two, two neuron transmitters in my book that are in this table they provided for me and I think another one that they left out is dopamine or whatever which is an important one for some diseases and stuff like in schizophrenia or whatever um, and then they list one contact dependent dependent signal molecule okay so really quick some hormones adrenaline <laughs> it increases our heart rate and our blood pressure and our metabolism and then there's um, cortisol it also affects the metabolism of proteins carbohydrates and lipids and most tissues I don't really know what this one is about but maybe maybe I'll learn soon and there's estrogen or estradiol it comes from the ovaries and that's what makes us act more female like it, that's one part of it anyway <laughs> it's our secondary female characteristics and then um glu glucagon glucogen stimulates glucose synthesis Gluc glycogen breakdown and lipid breakdown in liver and fat cells so Maybe that's a good way to lose fat or something. I don't know. Um, insulin. For those diabetes out there, they don't have as much of this, so they need to take some. <laughs> um, testosterone for you guys. Um, thyroid hormone. My sister has problems with that. And uh, local meteors that I need to learn about. But I'll explain later. Okay, bye. Lesson's over. <laughs>